Hi all and welcome to a special show this evening of the Truth, Honour and Integrity show. Tonight's all about the Kingdom of Manor and the Foundation. So we'll be covering uh, a range of topics this evening and I hope you all enjoy it. An introduction to tonight's show. We have done some big shows in the past on the Truth, Honour and Integrity show. And this next one will also follow that line. A lot has been written on many of the subjects discussed tonight. And tonight will bring full clarity on a range of things that has affected humanity on and in all levels of society. A lot of what has taken place in our past has defied belief. Liberties were taken, abusers perpetrated against the people and a plethora of knowledge denied to us on all levels. Don't for one minute think those abuses and lies apply only to the general populace. Far from it. Those in all governments have recently been finding out how little they knew also. A staggering control system implemented by many, but known only to the very few. Much of the evidence shown to the various governments or heads of state is barely believable due to the scope and sheer complexity of it all. They had presumed they would know and would be aware of it. But just like we presume governments know everything and are aware, both assumptions are chronically wrong. It has been a long and arduous journey by what was initially by just a few, but has grown exponentially since the truth started to be revealed and also accepted. Some work is still to be done to tip the change to a better way. But then the real work starts of restoring this planet, ending the servitude, making sure nobody goes short on the basics in life, working diligently to bring harmony, peace and prosperity in the basic needs for life, all of which has to be done in harmony with our planet. We need to put an end to the blame culture and finger pointing. We are all responsible for this mess and all of us are responsible to correct it. Personal responsibility operating under the golden rule be of service to the self to enable you to be in service to others. To the many who will be listening to this show for the first time, welcome to the show. We are glad and grateful to have you here with us this evening. Hopefully you will all gain something out of it and I hope you will all leave the show with a renewed vigour to correct the ways not conducive to humanity, to boldly step forward for your people and to strive to be the real change we all desire and need. Time for us all to come together and this song says it best. Hi all and welcome to the show. I'm going to bring the guest on now and um, I'm going to ask her to introduce herself and uh, welcome. Good evening Thomas, how are you? I'm doing fine, how are you? (laughs) I'm doing well. Good. Um, I'm here tonight to uh, discuss with all of you in a very informal setting uh, and then to answer all your questions regarding the kingdom of mana and the trust that is affiliated with the kingdom and how that all came about. Again, this is not a legal disclosure. It's just an informal setting and a discussion uh, to help you understand exactly why the kingdom of mana was formed and where we're going from here. Sounds good to me. Right, let's get into some of the meat of the show. So it's... Uh, we're going <coughs> to do it in categories so uh, we can, people can have a, a nice flow to all the information that's going to be delivered. 
and we're going to start with the kingdom of manna itself and who or what is or are the kingdom of manna the kingdom of manna uh, was a decision made between the original tribes uh, there were five at the time um, and their current descendants and a group of people uh, known as warrior and that, I'll explain that a little further when we start talking about the tribes uh, it was actually designed uh, to act as a shield in front of the original tribe uh, for the future ceremonies it was also uh, designed to be a flagship as the kingdom of mana is officially the only sovereign nation on planet Earth is, at this time which has no obligation to the Master Trust. That's very important um, because it did gain its own sovereignty in October of 2016 and it is the only sovereign nation at this time on planet Earth. And we're hoping to change that uh, by being the light and the darkness so everyone can really understand um, what, how the nations need to move forward to become an independent nation. And that's independent on multiple levels uh, based on the slavery system that was installed by our former controllers. Good stuff. So what have the Kingdom of Mana achieved in terms of status and why? Uh, the Kingdom of Mana has been consistently working with virtually every single nation on Earth. Um, it has formed a master plan of fighting against the control system on all levels, uh, not just the levels that we can see, uh, such as government levels or, you know, you've heard of these families and these factions. I know you've discussed that on your show before, um, <clears throat> but on levels you can't see. So the warrior team and the teams of the original tribes all had bits and pieces of information on how to circumvent the system. And by system, uh, it's not just a political system, a legal system, a spiritual system, um, and many other systems that were put in place by the former controllers of Earth. So in this instance, um, everything they've done to this point in a very short period of time um, is rather groundbreaking, and you may not see it or feel it on certain levels, but um, I, it is definitely happening, and I know you're seeing things now in the news that you didn't see before. So yes. it is a cooperative effort between all the nations and all the people. Yes, this um, will eventually, uh, as we'll cover as the show goes on, lead to the real change that we've all been looking for. And, uh, there's been... Uh, quite a, a historical legal background to the filing of what Kingdom of Mana has done. Are you able to expand on that at all? Uh, the Kingdom of Mana, are you talking about the previous kingdom? Yep. Okay. Yeah, there was a previous Kingdom of Mana on, on the planet, um, and it existed before Christ. I think it was in about the 10th century B.C., um, the kingdom was actually overthrown, <laughs> um, and it is no longer. However, um, the reason why the kingdom of Mana was named the kingdom of Mana is because the trust itself uh, was renamed after the agreements and treaties had either been overthrown or uh, legally circumvented. There is no better teacher than your enemy. Uh, so I, some of the members of the kingdom of Mana and members of the trust uh, had spent a great deal of time um, from the highest level on down uh, through the system to learn the system. So we thank our enemy for teaching us <laughs> how, to, <laughs> how, to circumvent <laughs> how to circumvent the system, and, and that it was our teacher. Yes, there's a, a lot of um, legal... Uh, ancient legal documentation to go through to arrive where we are and we're going to cover that later in the show so the Kingdom of Mana have done uh, these filings and are now as you said the only um, real sovereign of this planet um, 
What impact does Kingdom of Manor's blueprint have for the rest of the world or can have for the rest of the world? The Kingdom of Mana is designed to be a teacher. Uh, not an enemy, but a teacher. Um, right now we're having a significant impact on teaching the nations how to become a sovereign unto yourself. And, and there are several different structures which uh, control what you call banking. Um, banking is not a safe, it is not a storage facility. <laughs> it is a... It is a means by which water <laughs> abuts land. So we can talk about admiralty law and whatnot, but but the whole structure uh, is, is basically a play on work. So the Kingdom of Mana and all its associates and its teams have figured out all of the legal loopholes dating back 16,000 years until today uh, in order to assist all of humanity and all of the nations on being free. So uh, to the return, everything from the return of your soul and the return of your property. Big stuff. Big stuff. We'll probably be covering the soul aspect and uh, some other details in a different show, but this is all to do with um, some of the legal aspects and some of the... um, things that have been filed and how it's been done and who's helping who and who's not and uh, so this from what I know and I hope you can elaborate on that there's been uh, what efforts have been done to show the rest of the world and the the other countries how to do uh, and follow what the Kingdom of Manor has done and what has the response been in general from the other countries Uh, You know, the establishment of fear uh, globally um, is still very much present. Um, And people are are very confused, and some are catching on right away, and some are still learning the system. There's so many aspects of the system, it would boggle your mind, um, you know, even as an awake person, a person that actually understands something is wrong. And, you know, you've been doing this for for most of your life, Thomas, and, and these people knew nothing about any of this. So it's a learning experience for everyone. It has been very well received. Um, some nations have been looking for ways to get out of the slavery system for a very long period of time. Therefore, they are a little bit more knowledgeable than others. Um, you know, and in other nations like the USA, it's been, it's been quite a struggle. Uh, they don't understand why the families which is all they knew, um, are not funding the government anymore or the money is barely trickling in. Um, They don't understand why they're not doing the same things that they were doing before and the things that they are doing are not working. They're not achieving the end result as promised. So uh, we are well received uh, pretty much everywhere um, at this moment in time, um, both on a, we consider the uh, tribe level, uh, to be a government in a nation unto itself as well. So, um, you know, the working relationship between all our groups um, has been has been very well received. It's been a fight. It's been a battle. Um, for every positive we do, uh, the families come in and, and, and perpetuate a negative. And, you know, to, to somewhat the family's understanding of, of what is going on, you know, again, um, we had spent uh, several years with our teacher <laughs> uh, and um, to learn the system. And the families really didn't care about learning the system because they had their power visions, or so they thought. So the lives ran very deep, um, constantly. And deciphering between those the, the lies and the truth um, was, was a very difficult process. And... And um, I don't think the family's level is um, is ready to stand that. Yeah, I kind of mentioned in an opening piece uh, in between the music about the lies that have been told on all levels and um, how a lot of their plans... One of the uh, favourite things uh, our listeners like to hear when we describe certain things that the uh, control system are trying to implement and is it failed 
and largely a lot of their bigger plans, if not all, all of them, have now failed um, badly. And uh, I hope, you know, it must have been uh, really difficult uh, going and speaking with the uh, successive governments all around the world, all of them, and trying to relay a system that in reality, and I've said this on the show many times, if you think you know the system of control, you don't. It's nothing like what's on the internet. It's it's mind-boggling in its scope and uh, depth, and no one really has covered it or even scratched the surface of it. And it mu- must have been difficult trying to get that across because th- these people all think they're important, and so because they're important, they know stuff, only to find out everything pretty much they've been told is a lie or a diversion from the truth. Is that what you found? Uh, that's definitely what we personally found um, in dealing with um, the highest level. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and with the people on the Internet, uh, some, there is some bit of truth to everything. And, you know, within everything, within the systems, uh, there are parties that do put out some truth, and they do that in order to send messages to our groups from the inside out, and sometimes it's to send a message to the people in a way that they'll actually understand. Um, you know, and I and I do have to applaud all of those who are fighting. Um, I just wish, in some way, that we could get everybody to start swinging the same bat um, and and really understand that there is right and there is no wrong. Again, we're all learning, and and we've spent a lot of years learning as well. And, you know, to the tune of, you know, I know that they were continuously stealing from the trust until a few years ago um, <clears throat> by lying, of course. Yeah. So, you know, every everyone is learning. So this is a new experience for everyone. Um, everybody has little bits and pieces which make up a whole. And if the 8 billion people on planet Earth were all swinging the same bat and working together, there would be no more control system within days. Yeah. But that's not the case right now. So, you know, we do have a few million people working together with us, and if they are a team, and there is no one person that is more important than another. Uh, we are all equal, and we are all students. So uh, we appreciate, you know, yourself, Thomas, and, and all of the other people out there that are trying to trying to help fix the system. Yeah. So if the... Uh what will the impact be uh, globally if most, if not all, of the countries follow the Kingdom of Mana blueprint that's been set forward? Well, the the trust, uh, which is part of the um, part of the decision making and the implementation of the Kingdom of Mana, um, the trust had decided. Uh, when it went under new management uh, to rename the trust in totality as as the Mana Trust, as you put on your site. So the impact globally, um, now that the trust is under different management, is actually to destroy the trust. So the trust currently has the central control power of sovereignty virtually over every single nation on earth and every person on earth and every soul on earth. And the new management of the trust is trying to break that entire system down. And it does have the legal authority, thanks to our teachers, uh, to, to actually do that. So once the, bru- the, bu- excuse me, the blueprint is actually followed, uh, there will, each nation will become a, a nation unto itself, each person a person unto itself. And even though you still may be a citizen of, for example, the United States or any other nation, uh, you are still a, a person unto yourself with a living soul. And, and no longer behooven to a controlling, a centralized controlling point. So that basically ends the, um, capital letters we are dead pe- people at seven uh, nonsense that was being perpetrated for 
400 years, is it? Uh, yes, it was uh, since, I think, 1666. Yeah. And there are three um, there are three different sections of the SESQV estate. Now, each nation is called a state because it is actually an estate um, under SESQV. So um, various acts, there are various points of time, uh, some in relation to the United States, some in relation to every other nation on Earth, uh, have been implemented in order to create a dual system. So doing business with the trust, unbeknownst to yourself, um, falls under most of your legal filings. So, I mean, I see some of these uh, people on the Internet filing papers within the court, um, but you're filing papers <laughs> within slave court. <laughs> so you actually have to start filing paper paperwork uh, within monarch court. And a monarch is simply, uh, by definition, in court, um, in monarch court, is by definition a person that actually owns their own soul, soul, a sovereign unto yourself. And so there were very few people on uh, granted uh, monarchy um, since, oh gosh, in over a thousand years. Uh, so now uh, there are many others there, um, including one of the things that the Kingdom of Mana has recently done it is actually filed on behalf of all heads of state that during their term they are actually a monarch or a royal monarch over uh, the state. So they actually can now sign for the sovereignty of the state. So it no longer is an estate. It becomes its own state nation. Sounds good to me. Now, some of the concerns, uh, because, you know, there's been uh, a mistrust of royals and all these titles and whatnot, and some of the concerns of some of the members uh, to do with Kingdom and Manor is surrounding the titles, particularly to do with uh, Jasper. Can you address what that really means? Because it's not what people think. Well, Jasper um, himself has been recognized as the warrior, which we'll get into a little bit later. So Jesper is on the front lines fighting against the system. Jesper is, if you notice his title, it's actually Grand Master Knight. So he is a knight, or a Grand Master Knight, uh, which in the days of old was actually the party who would lead the troops to war, or would lead all the other knights. The only king on planet Earth, as it always was, was actually God or source, or creator. It was never any other being um, in the days of old. So that is why Jesper holds the title as Grand Master Knight. It does show that he is a royal monarch, which means that he has the right to rule over other monarchs, although they are monarchs unto themselves. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, um, okay. Okay. From- from what I understand, um, the Kingdom of Mana is not going to be the dominant, uh, like, new boss, same as the old boss. It, it's going to share the sovereignty out. Is that how I, have I understood that correctly? Well, the Kingdom of Mana's goal, again, Jesper being the front warrior and the trust being uh, behind him, yeah. um, and, we're, and the trust is behind him because... The trust needed a defender. So the kingdom became the knight unto itself, and the trust is actually the holder of the assets. So the kingdom doesn't actually hold assets. The kingdom's job is to purely defend the trust and go out onto the front lines and and assist the other nations in restoring their sovereignty. So can the kingdom of Mana restore sovereignty of a nation? No, it can't, but the trust does. So the Kingdom of Mana does the diplomatic uh, communications to all the nations uh, because it is a nation unto itself. So um, it, it is currently distributing the paperwork. It's explaining why this is necessary to be done, um, which starts breaking down the corporate-level structures going on through all the way down to the central banks of governments through the faction levels, through the family levels, and master levels, and 
D levels and C levels <laughs> of control. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, um, it's actually an attempt to, uh, re- restore states instead of them being estates of a third party crown corporation. Good stuff. Um, how does the trust and the Kingdom of Manor plan to deal with uh, justice to the criminals who have perpetrated the crimes against humanity for all this time? Is this something the people of each country will need to request from the Kingdom of Manor? And are there some kind of people's legal commission, a uh, new non-political party that could be put in place in each nation to deal with this? Well, the Kingdom of Mana is establishing embassies, and we do have agreements from about 144 different nations to establish embassies and or sovereign grounds in some places in protection of either assets or of people. So the Kingdom of Mana is forming its own alliances and, of course, will come to the aid of its allies. However, um, the Kingdom of Mana is a sovereign unto itself. And under the original sovereign rules, the kingdom cannot be an aggressor. It can only be a defender. Otherwise, it loses its sovereignty under monarch law. So this is something that every nation eventually will need to adhere to. Um, But if if it would like to keep its sovereignty, or at least gain it and and keep it, I guess. um, We are helping uh, define the uh, infiltration in nations. Um, and we are assisting the nations in understanding the control system. But again, you know, it took us years to figure it out, uh, uh, you know, with the help of, of almost two million people. So, you know, we're, we're also distributing information. We're putting, putting together booklets so the nations can actually understand the control system should they choose to leave it. So in the case of criminals, um, we have pointed out uh, to several nations that these parties have forfeited their sovereignty and they are not monarchs. Um, they are now part of the slave system themselves, uh, and they are subject to the laws of the nation to which they are citizens. Uh, there is no sovereignty that would give you global immunity against the law of the nation. So if you commit treason in the United States, then you are tried for treason. They claim right now um, that they are the owners of Crown Corporation. Crown Corporation is what happened when they bankrupted the uh, Bank of England and uh, the Crown, the actual Queen of England, um, or, well, now the Queen, but in 1814 when they did it, uh, there wasn't a Queen. Um, <clears throat> and um, they took over the entire Crown Corporation, hence making privatizing the actual trust or the SESQV estate. So all estates <laughs> formed underneath the Crown Corporation, um, they're claiming to actually own, which is why they are claiming to be the royal monarchs of Europe and the United States and, and, and other nations. Uh, however, that is not the case. Um, Crown Corporation at the time... Uh, was a subsidiary of the trust, which is now known as Mono World Holding Trust. It was never a controlling factor, factor, factor sorry, and um, it was a one, two, about seven to eight controlling points down uh, from where the actual master control over the trust lay at the time. So it's a misconception. Yeah. And it's a perception only of power. It's not real. Mm-hmm. No, and uh, we've kind of covered this. Uh, so many certain organizations, um, probably best not name, but certain high-level organizations that uh, seem to think uh, that they um, operate with impunity um, now found out that they don't have sovereignty and, and can't make certain agreements. And, <laughs> and uh I don't think they're best pleased, but um, this is the way things are going. This is the changes that uh, people are now starting to see and that we've all been looking forward to. So, uh, where are we next? 
how old is the kingdom of manna and um, the manna world holding trust really well the trust um, is very old um, and it actually started um, under the agreements of 16,000 years ago wow. um, during the war um, it had several different names um, you probably heard names on the internet like Alpha Omega and and Rothschild Trust and the Crown Trust and, you know, varying Philippine Trust and Swiss Indo Trust and, and all of these different trusts, um, which are, were actually always only one trust. So the names are irrelevant because, you know, as you've said in the past, Thomas names, 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 right? Yeah. The ultimate purse and the ultimate key holder had always been in the past by agreement, 16,500 years ago, um, has been on the, on the highest level, which was far above any of these uh, alpha, omega, trilateral people. I mean, they're very down, they're very far down the bottom. If I were to write all the names on a sheet of paper, um, the paper would probably be six foot long, and you'd start getting to the trilaterals and the Swiss Indos and the those people probably somewhere about four inches from the bottom. <laughs> yep. Um, how is it that the tribes who are so uh, inextricably woven into its origins with the uh, trust or class or accounts and systems forgot such an important piece of the prophecies such as the kingdom of, of manna or the world holding trust in all their dance and celebrations leading up to 2012 and beyond how come the tribe well, missed it well let me define tribe for you um, when I use the term tribe I'm, I'm actually using a group groups of people who existed on planet earth 16,000 years ago so there were five main groups at the time some say seven, and, and we all concur with about five. Um, and each one of the original groups uh, has its own structure. So you have, you know, like in certain areas of the world, they call them the shamans. And these are the parties that relay the information directly from source to the tribal leaders. Mm. Now, and it would probably boggle your mind to know that tribe has nothing to do with Indian tribe. Yep. Tribe has to do with the original people <laughs> who were here at that time and their current descendants. Yep. So uh, it's not quite like everybody portrays it to be, um, you know, although we have, of course, respect for all the tribal nations, just as yep. we have respect for all of the nations in the world. Um, they did not forget um, the, the tribe who was present at the time of the original agreement was the one most in contact with the warring groups yeah. as I understand it and they had uh, known of these groups for quite a long time and there was a lot of trading done between these groups and then two of the other groups started warring to the point where the other tribe had no tech not, not enough technology uh, to stop the war as a third the enti entity but as the party one of the parties most present um, you know at the time yeah. so the agreement was made in order to keep the peace and keep all their people from dying yeah. that's basically what ended up happening at that time so did they forget no they were waiting for a time in accordance with the prophecies that had been passed down from the shamans to the tribal leaders and the tribal chiefs and the warriors, they were waiting for a time where the they call they refer to a party uh, called the fifth element. And when the fifth element and the warrior arrive, then the planet will be restored. Yes. So it's a I don't really know the entire prophecy, but I know they are, were looking for specific people to show. Um, which would then lead all of the five original tribes out of the 
uh, out of the martial law agreement or global war, and every all law is predicated on on wartime. Uh, so is all banking, everything else. It's all all based on wartime. So once they had discovered that the fifth element in the warrior had arrived, they began the initiation of the peace agreement or the peace treaty agreement, making peace between all living matter, not just intelligent life, all living matter on Earth. So that peace treaty has been circulating now basically on foot by land, sea, and air to the original tribe uh, for all of their signatures. And then there'll be a, an upcoming uh, peace ceremony to commence the treaty in the old way, in special locations. Sounds good. Um, who originally was Emperor Constantine to Mana? Without getting into too much detail, um, and, and I'll kind of breeze over this, um, Constantine uh, initiated the first Council of Nicaea. So the council at the time was formed of what we're now calling the shamans and the prophets and the original leaders only as relayers of the word of source or creator to the tribal chiefs or to the... Uh, to the leaders of the lands. At the time, it was decided uh, that the world would be divided into nine kingdoms, and the one with the most royal blood or real royal blood, which would have been the Sangreal at the time, would be the one with the right to veto uh, over over the council or over the other leaders. So, uh, at the time, uh, this is when they formed Nikia Creed or the Nicene Creed, um, which was implemented uh, in accordance with the structure. Good stuff. Um, so when did the last kingdom come into being? Um, has there ever been um, one that's come into being without shedding blood? Uh, the last official... Um, kingdom uh, to be to be implemented I think was in about 1500 AD um, and of course there was a lot of bloodshed at that time um, I would have to say it's at least well over um, a few thousand years since the last kingdom was formed without shedding any blood good stuff right so we're gonna this will be probably the last uh, question on the uh, kingdom of mana and uh, we might get into a couple more bits before the top of the hour and have some music and have a rest for a bit. Um, this is a question from one of the members. How much say or foothold does Britain have over the Admiralty chain of islands? The Kingdom of Manor is located on Los Negros, and the island next to this is New Britain Island, and the island next to it is New Ireland. Does Britain have any control over those islands uh, not over the kingdom of Mana at this time and we are concluding the paperwork with uh, Papua New Guinea uh, so they are their, a sovereign nation unto themselves as well which encompasses the island the um, again um, the crown which has nothing to do with the Queen of England uh, the crown which was controlled and still is, uh, well, the trust is not, but the Crown Corporation um, was and still is Rothschild. So it had nothing to do with the actual queen. The queen was actually under Crown Corporation. So the, since 1814. Um, now, the main trust, and Maine, which is the only sovereign which holds all other states or estates, has released the Kingdom of Mana as its own sovereign entity. So over the area which has been gifted by the by Papua New Guinea, 
um, and is now the kingdom of Mana, no, the queen, the crown, crown corporation, Rothschild has no control over the kingdom of Mana land, nor its people, uh, nor its mineral rights, nor, nor any of its assets. So it has worked very diligently uh, to formulate its central bank and its central banking system uh, together with all the team members. And that is the first central bank currently on planet Earth that is in no way, shape, or form obligated to the trust itself. And the trust itself is in no way, shape, or form obligated to Rothschild any longer either by agreement and by default. And we can get into that a little bit later if you'd like, but... Yeah. But it, it is, has no control. The Queen, nor Crown, nor Rothschild, or anybody else has any control over the Kingdom of Mana or its assets. Good stuff, say all of us. <laughs> right, seeing as you mentioned uh, the control structure, um, can you explain some of the control structure so it will make it easier for people to listen to the rest of the show? Okay. Thomas, do you think it'll be easier to go from the bottom up or the top down? <laughs> <laughs> uh, your choice. I'll leave that up to you. Okay. Um, I'm going to speak a little bit, and you're going to have to read between the lines. And I know, Thomas, you've discussed a lot of these things in the past, um, yeah. along with some of your other guests. So I'm going to be very vague uh, for purposes of this call. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, the top of the tower, um, you have what I would call the D level. And on the D level, uh, most recently, you used to have four, and now you have three. And they control any other parties involved in the D level. Then you had have what we call the P level. And the P level would take orders from the D level, which was up top, and relay those orders to its lower level called the C level. <laughs> As we go down the food chain here, the C level was responsible for uh, legal jargon, black magic, um, anything intertwining that had to do with souls and selling of souls, collecting of souls, uh, and the more important agreements which the D level had made with a gentleman by the name of Mr. L. So Mr. L made a deal with the D level for collection of souls in exchange for power. And and very similar to, you know, Solomon with Solomon's sword and shield, and if you hold the sword and the shield, you will never lose a battle. Uh, they made a deal with somebody a little bit different than Solomon did. So, but the rings are the same, and they carry on down the levels, okay? Yeah. Then you get down to what I call uh, the master level. The master level are considered to be slave masters, and slave masters were designed to control the head slaves, uh, which you are now talking about families. Yeah. So... When to go back up a little bit to D level, P level, um, and even potentially C level, uh, there were many groups of people, um, and let's call them the others. So the other people up there uh, were actually also uh, slave level, but the master slave level was designed to control people. Yeah. So humanity, and essentially. So they formed these groups of people called the families. And then you get to families and factions of families and, and other head slaves. And then once you get from past the faction level, now you have governments. And factions are often intertwined within governments. Uh, but after you get through government level, now you start talking about the people. So as you can see, there was a large sheet I showed you, uh, Thomas, yeah. that was so long and had so many names, and you didn't even start getting to government until you were within the last couple of inches of the page. Okay. So each each area has about 12 points. Uh, some are spiritual levels, some are political levels, some are banking levels, some are financial levels, some are treaty levels. 
and and each one of these levels had its own control structure to control the next link in the chain and all links in the chain under it. The trust was always fully under the management at the D level, at the very top. So it managed all of the souls, it managed the SESQV, it managed the land, it managed the resources, and it managed money control. So the illusion that the families or the factions or everybody's arguing with governments over accounts and whatnot, it's an illusion because it would have never, ever happened should the D-level have been still in place. So these are the types of things that the Kingdom of Mana has discovered over a you know, a number of years' time, and and has actually managed to crumble some of it so far, and and the rest of it is is coming along very nicely. And the governments are are getting on board as they're understanding the the current structure is falling. Um, but again, there's still fear. Yeah. In in essence, it, it, you know, all members have been. Um educated in a way where I've tried to tell people it doesn't matter whether it's Obama, it doesn't matter whether it's Trump or Blair or May or whoever in any country that they really have no say in the matter in what in what takes place. You know, we mentioned the 39 levels of secrecy in the United States. All of those layers control or uh, are above Mr. Trump or whoever else is the alleged president at the time. And uh, so, is that that is correct as you understand it? It, it has been that way, um, you know, at varying points in history. But uh, I can, I can, in the United States since the days of Lincoln. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yes, um, under global martial law or under martial law. Uh, the current head of state um, or state um, is always the uh, reigning uh, general or the dictator in this case, but the reigning general. So the reigning general controlled controls all structures uh, during martial law. And, and when you have global martial law, uh, that leaves you with uh, a reigning general <laughs> and, and some uh, colonels up there at the top. And D D level, no, yeah. nowhere near government. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The wheel within a wheel. <laughs> it's uh, it, it's extraordinary what's uh, been set in place here. It's extraordinarily clever, um, in a strange sort of way, of how they managed over so many thousands of years to keep going and only have so few really to understand or grasp what's going on Uh, as you were describing the individual uh, layers it's my understanding each layer down was lied to and then the next layer down was lied to and the next layer you know and none of them knew what the next layer up knew and they were lying to the ones below and so nobody really knows what's going on and it's a kind of a case um, I've said this before uh, many times on the on the show once the top structure starts collapsing uh, we're left with a lot of people who think they know stuff but in reality know less than some of the people in the alternative media and these people have just followed orders for many years all their lives and then suddenly they've been thrust or thinking they've been thrust into leaders' roles and they're not capable of it. And uh, this has uh, helped us in many ways, the fact that the Illuminati broke up into the factions and people wanting uh, the various factions suddenly think that they can control the planet when in reality that will uh, fracture and fracture and fracture. And then what will be left in my opinion, is a few people who uh, are not in control of their faculties or senses, uh, you know, and they just seem to think that they own everything, when in reality they own nothing. Or their own soul. (laughs) 
Most yeah. of these people don't have one anymore. Um, yeah. You know, the lie, actually, you know, to be very clear, um, the lie uh, started <clears throat> with an agreement made on deal. But yeah. They were too lied to, yeah. uh, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, told that something was possible that wasn't possible. Um, you know, there is no such thing as a co-creator. There is a, a creator. Um, and I'm going to give you a little bit of clue into that, but the further down the line, you know, the the major agreement, uh, not so much on D level, but uh, uh, going back down the, the chain here uh, to uh, family level and master level, um, ended uh, end of 2012, December 23rd. I think you remember the whole world was supposed to end. Yes. And we're all still here. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, and so that was supposed to be the harvest of souls, you know, at the time. Yep. Sorry. And uh, and the, the the people involved on the different levels here pleaded um, all the way to the top on D level. Um, and about September, was on D level, they actually knew this was going to happen, and um, they they pleaded with the the gentleman on the other side of the agreement and uh, asked for more time. And, and of course, liars do, liars do, uh, might as well just call him Mr. Liar. So Mr. Liar agreed and gave them a hundred year extension. So they assumed that if they got an extension, that all of the assets and everything else that were contained within the trust would be immediately returned. But no, not part of the deal. So they're still running around with Project Looking Glass and all these things that were purportedly prophetic, but nothing more than instructions coming from D-Level and beyond um, it, it, to implement some plan that no longer exists. <laughs> Oops. So that's pretty much where everybody's at. And, and you know, and they're selling souls and, you know, Solomon's legends and rings of controlling angels and demons and... You know, um, natural law is very important here because under natural law, you cannot contact an angel, be it a demon or an angel, and and ask them for things in relation to personal gain. So they can call them, but if they're calling for that, then the karmic backlash is immediate and told from the people, very people they called upon, be it either one. So that's been happening quite frequently. Mm-hmm. That's good. Right, we're at the top of the hour. We'll have a couple of songs and we'll be back with part two. I think this song kind of fits. Hi all and welcome back to the second part of tonight's show. Um, judging from some of the comments in the chat, you're all enjoying what you're hearing to date, and that's good. Um, we are going to have some more fun now, with lots more info uh, to be revealed. So those two songs, winds of change, the, the winds of change are blowing through this planet at a rapid pace. Um, I know lots of people, well, some people, think, oh, nothing's happening. Well, everything's happening. It's just that a lot of it is remaining behind closed doors for various reasons. One, not to scare the populace into panic. And may it be, as the the second song, may it be that we all stand up together because that's the key to going forward. No more division. This is what is being uh, achieved and ultimately being striven for going forward. So we're going to get into some agreements now that's been going on. One of them you mentioned previously, but there's um, there's other agreements that I'm aware of. Um, 
a hundred year one, a two hundred year one, a five hundred year one and a thousand year one. Never mind the sixteen and a half thousand year one. Can you talk on any one of those uh, for the hundred, two hundred, five hundred or the thousand year one? Uh, sure. Um, remember, all agreements are based on the original agreement yeah. um, because all of the sub-agreements were created by at the B level. Um, these were not the inventions of families, unbeknownst to everybody. <laughs> they were just basically carrying out orders as, as had place. So uh, the thousand-year agreement was an agreement um, on different levels of the control, control structure. Uh, they are very famous for putting in little clauses based on varying degrees of law, uh, whether it be monarch law or binary court or, or uh, even uh, slave court <clears throat> um, in order to achieve their goals on various levels. So on some level, um, you're you're talking about maybe a 500-year agreement, you would be referring to an agreement where a uh, Rothschild started interbreeding the original Sangreal and the original families in order to gain control, thinking that and on the spiritual level that the Messiah would be born of that line, therefore they would have to control this person. Um <clears throat> And there's a little different take when you start talking to some of the original tribes about what that actually is. Uh, but um, that was part of the reason for it. Uh, the next uh, reason for it uh, was actually to uh, control the banking structure that was being implemented at that time on a global scale. Uh, this agreement expired on September 5th, 2012, um, hence the request for a renewal um, as high as the B level because uh, without the super system or AI system as you call it and it would be nearly impossible to control 8 billion people the cyber system contained or the AI system contained multiple different factions um, systems so it had an infiltration starting in 1998 through virtually every intelligence agency on planet Earth, um, making sure that the dissemination of information was always in their favor. Um, also into central banking systems starting in about 1913 uh, and continuing on until the implementation of the Bank for International Settlement, which was just another control, control structure. No central bank on planet Earth could be issued a central bank registration number unless it was from the master number, which was also controlled at the B level. Yeah. So the illusion of it being controlled on any family level or faction level uh, was just that, simply an illusion. So the ultimate decision on whether or not anyone gained any kind of a central bank was, was made at the very top. Yeah. So every subsequent agreement there, too, um, was gathering of more people and more nations underneath the same con control structure, including, but not limited to, the United Nations. Oh. So uh, you mentioned 1913. That's kind of when the Federal Reserve System was implemented in the United States. And, uh, of course, that charter has now ended. Um, it, it, what is the way forward with the Fed? Because obviously the illusion of it existing uh, still carries on. Um, is well, eventually with uh, America being declared sovereign, will end that nonsense altogether, once and for all, or do we repurpose it? Well, um, you know, unfortunately the the parties that are now running the trust, um, which are not Rothschild and not Chinese elders and not any of these former faction leaders, um, it is a party that you wouldn't recognize if you heard their name. Um, yeah. They are uh, part of the original tribe, and under the old agreement, uh, they happen to have 
the the most um, DNA of the original Sangreal. So that that that's the party that's that's currently there uh, in cooperation with all of the original members at that time. So they have, you know, were dealt a, a pretty um, pretty rough hand with multiple control structures. So the Fed being one of them. Uh, I know a few years ago uh, they had made a decision to remove the asset base after the expiration of the agreement uh, between the Fed and the Trust uh, to return assets relevant to each nation uh, in the off-ledger system credited to each nation. So any, regardless of how the assets were acquired uh, through varying points in history, uh, it is now reallocated and repurposed uh, to each nation to include, uh, but not limited to, the, the Department of Treasury of the United States, not to be confused with the Treasury of the United States. Uh, yes. They are two separate entities. Yes. Uh, so the Fed, the Fed is a clearinghouse at the moment. Uh, it clears wires, transfers, and and flips and incoming through the nation and to 140 nations. It no longer holds the right to print paper currency on behalf of the United States, although it is like the elephant in the room that nobody's discussing. Um, the, the current head of state is addressing some of these things uh, little by little in the news. Uh, so the decision uh, on what to do with the Fed uh, once the United States is a sovereign unto itself is purely the decision of the United States. So it can, you know, some discussions have been had about nationalizing um, the Fed and then slowly phasing out a dual system. Um, but, you know, that's ultimately the, the decision of the citizens of the United States and its current reigning monarch, which is no longer Rothschild or the Crown. Crown Corporation being Rothschild. Um, something that was mentioned previously, uh, I'd like you to touch on. Um, there was liens uh, against the trust that sh um, was then loaned to countries, as I understand it, which should have been um, interest-bearing, uh, for, uh, for want of a better, uh, better term where the country should have received benefits from it rather than debts. Can you discuss any of that? Uh, sure. Um, in the agreements with the trust, uh, the uh, slave masters, um, which again are, are way down the food chain's job, was actually to collect and control um, resources of the whole planet uh, on behalf of their uh, master on the D level. So that was their exclusive job. So by using political control, financial control, um, various legal jargon, uh, over the years they had basically tied up almost all of the in-ground resources on behalf of the D level. And what the D level had gone ahead and done is they had basically leaned Basically, every vein of gold, every diamond in the earth, every every drop of oil uh, into perpetuity. So, oil is a regenerating regenerating resource, as you know. Yeah. Um, and they created the money magic system, like you call it, uh, which is a an algorithm, a trading algorithm, which continuously trades against all of these resources in order to fill up buckets of accounts, which you are calling the global collateral account. The family level or the slave master level was very efficient in achieving most of these goals but unbeknownst to them those liens still exist to this day so the only party that can actually hold an asset of a nation legally is a sovereign so the reason why the trust still holds all of these in ground resources is because it is the only sovereign other than the kingdom of mana and the kingdom of mana is not 
has zero intention of conquering any other nation for its resources. And that is not in its charter. So the nation itself has to become a sovereign entity in order to hold its own assets, and that is in relation to monarch law. So once those papers are all properly filed, then the asset base gets returned to the nation, cannot be leaned by a third-party entity who is no longer a sovereign, such as the United Nations, Rothschild, the Crown Corporation, or any other entity claiming to have sovereignty that does not. They would actually have to dispute uh, and and in monarch court and claim claim sovereignty or or royal monarchy again. Uh, and I can guarantee you there will be parties there present to dispute that claim. Absolutely. So cur- currently, what they've been doing is trying to. Uh, you know, we've seen everything from the leveraging or attempted leverage of the uh, BLM in the United States over to the Shanghai Exchange and the Chinese elders. We've seen leveraging attempts of all of the asset base underneath the continent of Africa to the most recent one yesterday of the of the nation now known as Russia. So. All of these attempts will fail because in the algorithm banking system that they created themselves, great teachers they are, um, unfortunately there's a first lien holder which prevents any third-party entity from making a lien against another party's asset. So as the ultimate reigning sovereign, we have a different goal um, than our our predecessors did. Uh, so we're basically blocking that and letting them know that they have spent all this money over all these years um, conquering nations and doing, you know, feeding war machines and doing all these things. So until those liens are paid back, we're not interested in participating in a third-party sovereign, which is questionable, entity leaning another sovereign entity, which is still a sub-sovereign. Both of them were sub-sovereign um, assets. So we're not we're not doing that anymore. So until they can pay back uh, astronomical numbers uh, of of currency, you know it's rejected every time in the banking system. So they're they're having a, a lot of trouble understanding why their corporation central banks are are no longer able to sign off on resources of their nations, and and they've had beatings and bribes were promised and given and whatnot and. And it's not happening anymore. They don't really understand why, because they didn't create the system. The D level created the system. Yep. And this is what um, backs up what I said earlier, uh, how nobody wants the further you go down the chain, nobody understands the system and why they failed ultimately. And uh, I think I worked out it, um, the. One of the liens is 27 years global GDP. So that, that's uh, just one of them. And so they're in trouble and they're not going to get out of it. Any, uh, you, we've mentioned briefly uh, about the 16 and a half thousand year global treaty uh, that was recently uh, voided. Any updates on that at all? They are in the final stages right now of that treaty passing through all of the appropriate hands that it needs to pass through. Um, these parties with knowledge of that agreement um, that were present, or their, their ancestors were present at that time, and it should be completed shortly, I think, within the next uh, month. It's been circulating the globe uh, since the 6th of August, 2016, uh, you have to remember some of these people live in very remote locations yeah. and and due to breaches of cyber security and, 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 and many other things that they've created in their control systems, uh, all of this has to be done on foot. Yeah. Uh, it has to be hand-to-hand deliveries. There has to be, in the old way, uh, some prints and, and, and whatnot, uh, which is still that agreement. Now, in a previous show um, to do with this um, particular agreement that was voided, uh, there was mention uh, about things particularly to do with a kangaroo skin and something to do with a staff or a stick. 
that was involved with mm. that particular agreement. Uh, can you elaborate any further on that? Uh, sure. Um, the <clears throat> the agreement uh, was um, at that time on a kangaroo skin uh, by the party that was uh, most uh, closely involved with the two warring groups. And um, it was an attempt to create um, no more blood loss <laughs> or bloodshed um, uh, on planet Earth. So it wasn't necessarily a peace agreement, but both parties had agreed at that time to have control um, over various areas. Um, and of course, they were lied to too. You know? yeah. um, there were there were non-disclosed parts of that agreement and implied consent. So uh, the stick that you're referring to was part of the ceremony. So in the days of old, at that time, they believed that certain places on Earth were holy places or places that were like what you would say were the portals to heaven. Um, and the agreement was sealed um, in song and dance and frequency. Um, and the stick itself was representation of uh, bringing the heavens to the earth in the old prophetic way. So the, the undoing of the agreement, um, they're the descendants of these folks will be present at, at this uh, location, same location, and the same process will be repeated, uh, this time with a member of, of each one, uh, a descendant, I should say, of each one of the original tribes that were present at that time. So, again, in the tribal prophecy, um, the tribes uh, believe they have identified uh, the party they call the fifth element, or the the one closest to source, uh, which apparently is something that pops up uh, every 2,000 years or so. There's an opportunity to do this, and, and the warrior pops up at the same time. So shall they find each other, and shall they work towards the peace of planet Earth, um, then the ceremony will commence with all of the original members present, and um, each rep represent representation of all life existing on planet Earth. So some of the tribal members uh, will be there, uh, for example, to dance and sing on behalf of grass. You know, we will make peace in accordance with natural law in nature. You know, there are things in nature like survival of the fittest and whatnot, but, and, and of course there's food sources, but we have to give what we take. And, and this is something the tribes understand, especially the original tribes, is that if you take from the earth, you must give to the earth. So if we're nourishing plant life on the planet, uh, plants are also a food source for us and a med medicinal source for us. So we must give as much as we take. We only take what you need and we leave the rest. Yeah. Um, so all of these uh, representations be there at the ceremony, making peace under natural law, um, you know, I guess you would say what they what they consider to be in a place where they're closest to heaven. Will the uh, people of Kingdom of Mana be part of that ceremony? And all our team members will be there as well. Good stuff. All right. Um... I'm going to cover some things that are related uh, more to the people. I call this the people issues. And uh, the first thing I uh, want you to address is um, there's many people uh, in the alternative community who think this is um, this freedom and obtaining our sovereignty and a whole heap of other things. Um, taking back our souls and mind anything else is largely uh, played out on the internet like it's some sort of virtual reality game but um, our team has faced some serious issues recently with the team being fired at issued death threats permanently from prominent entities um, 
in this country and, and beyond. And also, uh, abduction attempts. Can you address some of that, please? Uh, I understand, um, you know, a lot of members of the alternative community um, know that there's something wrong. Um, and knowing that there's something wrong is half the battle. But the system is very large, very deep, and very infiltrated. So, you know, I caution anyone, and this is just a matter of my own personal opinion. Uh, this has nothing to do with uh, anybody telling me anything about what to say or what to do, but I caution people very heavily on on filing papers and, and, and these types of things and, and renouncing citizenship because it really doesn't make a difference for your own self personally and the health and welfare of your family um, at this time. Um, you know, as I said, we are, you know, over 2 million team members strong worldwide, and these are some very strong people um, that have chosen uh, to join within the team to do their part because everybody does a part, and, and there is no superiors or hierarchies in our group, although we do have organizers and leaders. Um, the intention, and leaders are always at the bottom, they're at the top. The proper leader empowers their people and not the other way around. But I caution people against acting in this way just only because, you know, uh, for example, uh, we had some team members that were in a location and due to the uh, Paris uh, Treaty, uh, the Control Treaty, um, there is one clause in the hundreds of pages within that treaty, which does not go into effect until 2020. I want to make that very clear for anybody listening on the phone. That agreement does not go into effect until 2020. <laughs> but um, regardless, the UN um, had claimed control over all in-ground resources of every nation that had signed that agreement. Well, you know... Uh, First of all, the UN is not a sovereign. They were only ever a sub-sovereign underneath the main sovereign, which was always controlled on the level. The families are under the impression that they control the UN, which they pretty much do. So it, how does that affect the nations? Well, it really doesn't when you look at the larger picture that we've been discussing today. So the UN is a wonderful meeting place which cannot sign a treaty because a treaty takes place between two sovereigns. So the fact that when they initiated the Paris Treaty uh, was long after the UN had lost its sovereignty because the main sovereign dissolved that, um, I'm not really sure um, why, they, why they're signing a treaty at all. So they can be a keeper of records and a meeting place for nations, but legally uh, that treaty is not enforceable. Nonetheless, uh, this group of people happened to go into a particular area um, of the world um, where there were um, uh, assets, in-ground assets, and within minutes um, the uh, United Nations vehicles started rolling in their direction with uh, kill orders to keep all occupants of the vehicle that was sitting in the wrong land. And when questioned about it, because, of course, the authorities of this particular nation came and defended its citizens who were there, uh, who hadn't a clue that any of this was taking place, um, they, when questioned by the local authorities, they basically had stated that the UN has the right to defend its own land. So... Uh, these little sub-centers of UN started popping up uh, right about the time they started uh, initiating the signing of the Paris Climate Control Treaty. Now, irrespective of a signed agreement, which is not a treaty, it's irrespective of the nations that signed that agreement, still the main sovereign trust holds all of the liens on the in-ground resources that were already collected by the slave masters. Do the families understand this? 
obviously not, because they're making an attempt to collect the same resources they already collected in days past, uh, you know, given that probably not in their lifetime. But you can't, you can't lean something that's already leaned for the benefit of a sovereign that doesn't exist. So, um, fortunately enough, uh, these people survived, but this is just one incident. Um, I know of other uh, team members that have had uh, some high orders of people. I think Thomas, you call Anne, yes. and um, Anne, Anne has sent out kill orders on many people. Um, you're right to uh, see the some of the stuff you've said on previous shows about them appointing Pindar after Pindar after Pindar, and you can see that that doesn't even come into effect until after you pass Slave Master level down there at the bottom, and and they don't really understand why they don't have access to assets, or they don't understand <laughs> what's happening. And so um, Anne was promised she would be the queen of the USA, and um, this was a point by Pindar, and um, obviously none of that's happening. So, so apparently Anne went on a, on a vengeance, went out with a vengeance to find the people responsible for that not happening, uh, thinking that that would help, and um, demanding that this person or these people give, the, give some assets to Anne and her counterparties all over the world. There was supposed to be a new Russian czar and a new you know, uh, different factions around the world. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of, you know, two million people is a lot of people, and there's a lot of protection around these people now, and and that's due mainly uh, to the Kingdom of Mana and to the Warrior and to the Grand Knight that orchestrates security for all of the people involved, including the party with the trust. So... Um, this is not an internet thing. Um, nobody's filing papers on the internet, and people are traveling constantly all over the world. Um, they have very high security. Uh, you know, this, it's a constant battle. Um, I know uh, there, we, there's kind of a running joke amongst the team members as to who had the most contracts out on their life. I think uh, the winner right now is 1,089 um, <laughs> contracts. And, and and luckily, um, we haven't lost a team member yet, um, although we've had some team members that have been shot at. Um, we did have some people uh, recovering from uh, bullet injuries. Um, I know that uh, uh, some, of, some of the others were beaten, um, not to mention uh, uh, threats on their families. Uh, we've had to move a lot of people into hiding, um, you know, Everybody sits there and talks about, you know, two weeks and green lights and we're going in and we're doing all these things and we're access your accounts here and there, but nobody's taking any accountability to what actually is really happening. Yeah. So if what we were doing wasn't so right, we wouldn't uh, be having so much um, attention. attention from all those that are wrong. So, uh, so my main concern is for the safety of the members and safety of the people. Uh, yeah. They shouldn't have to be a part of this part of it, um, you know, just because somebody tells them to file some papers. Yeah. Well, the thing I want to reiterate is, uh, you know, people always uh, suppose it's uh, part of the Western society where everything's got to happen yesterday. Um and you must understand I hope this show and some of our previous shows gives you a level of understanding of what we're dealing with here and um, shows a bit more patience because you, you know, you're not the ones that are being shot at or looking over your shoulder on a daily basis you know it's it's not fun uh, but somebody has to do it and thankfully we've got um, many people who have had the courage to stand up and go enough's enough, we're going to actually do something about it and so um, I hope the the listeners to this show uh, have a bit more patience going forward, we're rather close to many things but the safety of the people uh, is the most important thing now, there's been a lot of issues with uh, banks and uh, 
not all of them, but there's certain elements uh, of banks. I think our members are more than familiar with the names who have been acting criminally for so long and their indoctrination is thorough as a result of that uh, criminality. And many of them have committed crimes against the people in managerial roles that they are unaware of. It's the same thing again, the compartmentalisation. Uh, will there be a retraining facility for bankers and banks to bring them back inside the parameters of what is legal and lawful financial practices? Uh, yes, um, that is also, um, we do have an agreement. Um, it is not a, um, how do you say it, um, they are not employed by the Kingdom of Mana, um, but there is an agreement with groups of bankers uh, that, believe it or not, existed and coexisted, albeit outside the system, um, with the with the banksters. So these people have been quietly working within the system and and making their money and, and making a positive change for humanity when and where they can. And the origins of some of these groups are very old. Uh, some of them have existed uh, prior to the time of Christ. So generation after generation, they've been working quietly outside a lot of the control stress control systems that have existed all be dealing with the banks within the control system so they're very well versed on all aspects of banking control they know that because their enemy is their teacher and they and they too uh, have learned from their enemy so they they have agreed uh, to work together with us um, and assist the banks in in repairing or replacing existing institutions um, in the future. So there will be training available. Uh, part of this new system uh, that is being implemented, and regardless of what happens with the reserve, it has nothing to do with the Queen, and they are now working towards a an asset-based trading system, which they've been well-versed on for over a 1,000 years. So they're good people, um, and we're very excited to work together with them uh, in many different ways uh, to to bring in a positive change in the banking system. So the the new system, um, I presume, will have mechanisms in place to ensure the financial system uh, and other entities to do with the finances are never um, under con- full control of one rogue group ever again. It's going to be more fair no. and transparent transparency as I understand it. Absolutely. The, um, each nation uh, should be responsible for its own financial system, which mm. will then, and its own platform, which no other nation needs to have access to. So that platform is a standalone platform which communicates with other platforms worldwide for global trade via a translator. So there's a, there's a, a system which is basically serves as a, um, a translator between platforms, so it speaks multiple computer languages. Uh, that platform will only will be monitored by all nations who participate in the new systems. So we don't really need to start installing country systems in other countries because it's not necessary anymore. Yeah. So if the nations do need a base cyber platform, we would provide that with all the coding and all the firewalls and all the information so they have full and complete and total access, um, and then they can build upon that platform from there, um, or they can just simply build their, a complete and total separate system. Uh, doesn't have to uh, communicate, but there's no reason for funds from 140 countries to filter through a building in the United States and then go back to another country and about two to three weeks, and sometimes never under today, uh, <laughs> today's day and time. Uh, you know, we've lost a number of Swifts and a number of wires, and, and you know, it, it, we've had delays. Uh, we couldn't even send an $85,000 wire somewhere to get a piece of equipment we needed, and, and, you know, I mean, we worked on that one for over a month and a half. It was ridiculous. So, uh, you know, we're... 
of course, you know, they fly the kingdom all over the place so that, you know, make it, make life more fun. And um, <clears throat> the kingdom fired back with various systems in place that send notifications and correct intel and data to virtually every country on Earth. So every time they try to steal anyone's funds, be it ours or yours or ours or theirs, <clears throat> And that notification goes out everywhere around the world, so immediately everybody knows what's happening. Um, in addition to that, uh, we're very much looking forward to a conversion to an RTGS, or a real-time growth settlement system. A real-time growth settlement system is key in increasing uh, global trade. So uh, in order to release new funds into the banking system, meaning off-ledger funds into on-ledger funds or the use of allocation numbers, you must increase the demand for that those funds. So you have to increase the GDP of the nations in order to increase the amount of flow of funds within a system. Yeah. And money must continuously flow. So the... You know, for example, the People's Club is one of those avenues um, which is direct to the people. But but on, on a larger scale, uh, set, being able to settle out on goods and services bought and sold uh, between parties even within the United States or even, uh, you know, from the United States to China or vice versa uh, will actually dramatically increase each, na- each company's ability to produce its goods. So if you got paid for your goods, you know, the second that they're delivered, then you can order more of your components or parts or, or, or raw materials you need to produce your goods immediately without any lag time. Therefore, yeah. there's no lines of credit or debts associated with that, and, and companies are able to produce at a much, ra- much more rapid rate um, at that point. So uh, as we're talking about money, money kind of goes or should do goes through six phases and that has kind of been blocked um, can you explain that and how it can be redeemed well money money itself is designed to flow so um, money being held in large accounts somewhere by some guy saying I have X amount doesn't really do anything for the global GDP or the average everyday person. So if you have a a issuance of a new allocation of, for example, United States dollars, and those United States dollars go go to a company who is building a supermarket. Now, that's one exchange of funds right there. Then the supermarket has to buy steel and cement and and drywall and hire contractors to build the supermarket itself. So that's another exchange. Then the supermarket is going to buy food and whatnot to stock its shelves. So some of that money goes out to uh, trucking companies or train companies or plane companies to to source in that food for the supermarket. We have another exchange. And then you have the workers who just work to build the supermarket or any other project, then spending that money to buy in the supermarket to buy food for their family. You have another exchange. So what the old control system tried to do was to control every aspect of all exchanges. So they considered all people slaves, so they would control the end workers' pay, for example. Then, of course, you had the IRS. And then you have, and then you have the control over all food sources and of all medical sources and the baby powder you had to purchase and the diaper company and and then everything that went into that and the steel market and the bridge making market and so every single time a dollar would flip out they would collect funds against that dollar and that is where we have an issue because they even claim that the end user so. You, as the average everyday citizen who is building a savings account, they claim ownership over that via their banking system control mechanism. So as you could see like a few weeks ago with this, uh, um, you know, we've experienced a number of banking outages worldwide. Um, in Australia, it was Westpac. In 
the United States. It was J.P. Morgan, uh, and uh, we also had an experience with Bank of America. And what the family level uh, was doing is they had made an attempt to leverage every dime. doesn't matter if it was your Uncle Joe's account or your child's savings account. Every dime that was in, for example, Bank of America or Westpac Bank um, and, and try to leverage that out in another currency somewhere, and then they were going to return back the base asset. Well, they got declined everywhere they went, and not understanding, of course, how money actually works. An allocation requires a project. It requires something that you have to pay out on. And and paying out um, debts owed or promised to various governments or militaries or, you know, the currencies, uh, oil contracts or other things that are talked about sometimes on the Internet is not a project. It does not increase your GDP. So the... It was declined pretty much everywhere, but that left the average everyday citizen unable to, uh, you know, access their funds for some time, in some cases, days at a time. Um, you know, they, the people would log in to check their accounts. I know of Westpac Bank in Australia for sure, um, you know, and it would say no balance. Uh, I, I think uh, Bank of America just froze everybody out completely, and I think, think uh, J.P. Morgan's website went down. So, you know, they've done, they've tried all these routes. You know, and and it's failing. Um, you know, they may have technical control over the banking institution human that work there um, in cooperation with some hackers, uh, but they don't actually hold the stock options on the banks because nobody at D level would allow the head slave masters to have anything ever. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's a perception. You know, they were just doing their collection job. And, and nothing more, um, you know, and, and, and I don't even think the generation now even understands that part. So, yeah. so, so yes, it's, they've been very busy. <laughs> yeah, it's been reported that the world's GDP has started to plummet from around $114, $120 trillion uh, down to something in the 70 range. It's quite a drop. Are there plans ahead to correct this? Uh, yes, and the RTGS system is one of those things. Uh, and then also allowing average everyday citizens to um, to participate in projects which are going to uh, contribute to the uh, gross domestic product or GDP of each nation. So in part, um, the reason for the plummet is due to a bank liquidity crisis. Uh, in part, um, there are no more lines of credit. Uh, plus, they've also been siphoning very heavily off of the SWIFT system and the reserve systems, uh, whereby it could take uh, two, three days to get a wire from the East Coast to the West Coast or, you know, come getting a SWIFT from outside the country, inside the country, depending on the country it's being sent from, it could take up to seven days, two weeks, and I've seen them put bank holds on them for another ten days. So this significantly hinders corporations and businesses from doing business. Yeah. And uh, plus they've also uh, done some trickery with the Visa Core systems, the MasterCard systems. So even on a small level, even, you know, tourist, tourism and, and industries are, are, are declining. Because, you know, you, you know, there's only so much food on the shelf at the restaurant. There's only so much people can do and if you're holding these people's pay for for two weeks um you know they can't restock the shelves you know and sometimes they have to close their doors this is happening in other countries i know this for sure um one of the ways uh you know and 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 to discuss with the members here uh, the idea and the creation of the people's club was actually a way to funnel people uh, to people their funds on a private level and start from the bottom up and building industries. So ideas, companies, you know, even, even things like uh, providing a neighbor with food or, or shelter or, or assisting giving someone a hand up. Um, believe it or not, that actually does contribute to the GDP of the country, even in some small way, because 
you know, you're buying food, right? You're, you're, um, the food has to come from somewhere. Um, even if you're buying it from farmer's markets, it's still making a contribution to the farmers. So we're actually, you know, on, a, on some small way, you're contributing to the health and welfare of the, com- of the country uh, by what, it, you know, what it is you're doing while benefiting the average everyday citizens without having to go through a control mechanism. You know, the issues and the delays, obviously, you've heard about a lot of them, but, you know, we're trying to make sure that this time when when the people re- start receiving funds to grow businesses and to help neighbors, that they actually get to keep it this time, yeah. and and there's no control mechanism over how they spend their funds. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's illegal things that nobody can do, but, I mean, other than that, you know... Um, there really isn't a control point about how you grow your business, and nobody's going to shut you down. Yeah. So those structures are crumbling, but it but it's taken longer. And then you know, every time we find ten agreements, ten more pop up, and and those need to be addressed too, uh, in order to provide safety and security for all the the members participating. Yeah. So the issue um, of an asset back currency or currencies. Um, will uh, with along with the new system, will this prevent any leveraging into oblivion like what's gone on with the, the current or old system? Well, it has to be a basis. Um, yeah. You know, uh, from a scientific standpoint, uh, the value of gold does not lie in putting it in a brick and, and into a vault somewhere. Yeah. Um, however, it's been used in the past as a standard and can be used, again, as a standard, only be from the standpoint of it's something everybody understands. They can hold it in their hand, they understand its weight, it's shiny, it's pretty, and they know what it's worth, right? Because yeah. it's a standard. Yeah. So, so the goal is to return to an asset-based trading system. By returning to an asset-based trading system, there has to be an asset there in exchange for the pieces of paper you put in your pocket. So you have to start with an asset to exchange it for another asset, which is what asset-based trading is. Yes. So the hope in the future is to coordinate uh, – well, in the, in, let, me, let me kind of back up just a little bit. In the, in the trust system, in order to break apart the trust, which is the intention – We've actually allocated the, not only the resources of each nation uh, to back to the nation, but we've also calculated how much currency that particular nation has in circulation, both in digital and in paper funds, to the best of our ability, and then three times the GDP of that particular nation, which would come out over time. So currently as you would call them, the collateral accounts, have all been reallocated. There's no such thing existing in there anymore as the Swiss Indo people or the <laughs> any of the Germain peoples or the elder peoples or any of these other folks. They don't exist on any account anywhere. And we would we have shown virtually every single nation on Earth that this, this, that this is the case. Um, but they all have allocated enough gold to cur- cover uh, their current uh, GDP, I'm um, uh, oh, sorry, they're not the GDP, the current currency in circulation plus up to three times their current GDP, which is available for a project within that nation. And that includes increasing trade between nations. Yeah. So, um, you know, on a small scale, uh, that makes assets available for uh, to places like the People's Club. Yeah. Um, on a larger scale, uh, that makes programs like the original Plan of Experts work. The Plan of Experts has nothing to do with Swiss Indo or any of these things that you read on on uh, the Internet. Uh, under the original United Nations Charter, uh, it was a fund which was traded against resources <laughs> of nations, but it was accumulated... <laughs> with the purpose of increasing trade between nations. See, because at least you can say on D level they were smart because they understood in order to increase their global influence, since they controlled virtually every allocation of currency globally ever in existence, yeah. now it is under the trust, uh, which is 
you know, under different management, but but their control mechanism provided for every nation's allocation. No nation would ever issue an allocation unless it was a standing allocation without first consulting uh, these uh, slave masters down there at the bottom. And um, ultimately, the approval came from D-level. So, you know, it's a misnomer that these families ever controlled any of this. But, but the intention there was to actually increase the amount of control worldwide, a.k.a. by the release of additional currencies, which they controlled all of. So, although, you know, uh, there was one account that we actually left intact, but uh, the reason why it was left intact was actually because it was designed to subsidize trade between countries. So, for example, if a country A is buying cars from Ford, um, the they would actually pay at 50% of market value on an off-market transaction, and the trust comes in and supplements the other 50%. So the car company, Ford, who is now giving discounts to, say, Government A um, on their vehicles, they would actually get full market value for their vehicle, which will help them increase their production. And on the other side, the government is giving even greater discounts, so they're getting them at 50 cents on the dollar, so that maybe some of your – you probably noticed some of your local sheriff departments, for example, in the United States are having vehicles that are 5, 6, 7, 10 years old – and that's because they start at federal level and then they start going to auction to state level and then they start going to auction to county level and then they get down to the city level. And before you know it, the car is, you know, seven to ten years old and breaking down. The same thing with police equipment and all of these other things. So so it actually will bode to assist in another way, um, increasing the GDP of the planet in the flow of flow of funds and proper you know, uh, equipment for governments worldwide to include pencils for schools, um, education uh, systems will be improved, um, <clears throat> all all due to the plan of experts. So we're going to use their control mechanism in, a, in the reverse, is, is, I guess, the general concept. Jolly good. Right, we're going to have another music break, and we'll be back in about eight or nine minutes. And we'll be back with more. Bye for now. Hi all and welcome back to the final portion of tonight's show. Lots of information to take in there. <laughs> oh boy, is the uh well we're gonna we have some more for you. Some more things to learn uh and to get a grasp of. And uh this next next thing um will be new to most of us. And um, there's a saying that most people say: you sell your soul. And most people think it's a figure of speech, except it's not. And uh, somehow they legally obtained implied consent over all the souls in here as what is known as the monarch law. So can you uh, give us some details on that, please? Sure. Um, I know you've heard a lot of people discuss the uh, SESQV uh, trusts and the SESQV agreements. Um, There are three different parts uh, of that give them rights over your son. Now, in order to own a mark, because only Bren can own a they put the system in place, they're, they, they are the only monarchs. So, under this agreement, uh, it basically gives them rights over your soul. Uh, can I you do not claim the- it yourself. Oh, Can I just interject sorry. a minute? Can you start that sure. again? Because um, we had fun and games cutting you out there. Sorry about that. Um, the uh, CEST QV trust or the CEST QV agreement are 
are three have three parts. Uh, one of those parts is implied consent over your soul. So only a monarch or a royal monarch can own a slave. Therefore, they appointed themselves the only sovereigns on planet Earth. Therefore, everybody else is subject to slavery. A mustard card is one that is implemented by two different things. Uh, number one, a on a certificate agreement um, or blood. And I, I know you've probably all seen these things on the uh, birth certificates and, and, and whatnot um, being death certificates, but it also gives you the capacity at that time to claim your property. So your property is not only the land you own um, or the money you earn, but it's also by a very small clause in the agreement, your soul. So due to some agreements at a very high level, you level, and agreements they had made, um, you know, I, uh, some, somebody had asked question one people, uh, uh, did you see your soul? And they replied, no, but we encourage people to sell theirs. So the uh, consent, <laughs> the implied consent, uh, when you do not claim your property by the age of seven, then somebody does it for you. Therefore, they are very busy collecting souls there. Um, and also, uh, Sila uh, assists with that. Um, and P level, on family level, uh, you know, theirs is a given uh, over, over and over again by consent of accepting sin um, <clears throat> in exchange for personal gain. So these people running around um, exercising the uh, Books of Solomon and, and other disagreements um, is is actually not implied consent, that is actual consent. So... So, yes, this is part of the CESQV agreements uh, with the various clauses contained therein where you are actually dead at the age of seven because you did not claim your soul. And, of course, nobody knows to do that. Uh, therefore, every bit of property you have is actually owned by the trust, um, including your soul. So the part of unwinding the control structures top down is actually the return of property uh, to all of the citizens of humanity, um, all of the citizens of Earth, basically. So that is something. Um, and so and the Internet, they mention a lot about people trust and nature, and it's not, it's not really written inside the trust as, as you may think or as they imply on the Internet. Yeah. So there's been um, uh, a lot of discussion recently, and of course the leader of the OPPPT, oops, <laughs> oops PT as I've written, now named it, and their four-year loop. And of course these people uh, were around in 2012, 2013, promising people five or ten billion in gold and um, basically claiming your estate so state again and uh, of course Heather's now been arrested as part of the uh, Treasury Direct account stuff as well um, but you have the uh, full story on OPPT and what they were doing and, and why these people are being arrested Attempting to defraud the U.S. government for money is a is a, uh, is a federal offense. Um, number one. Um, <clears throat> number two. Um, the accounts that they refer to had nothing to do with the U.S. government Department of Treasury. Not at all. Not even a little bit. They existed before the U.S. existed. So. 
um, attempting to siphon funds from the Department of Treasury is not in any way uh, a factual statement by these people who are perpetuating the fraud. Um, you know, as, as in, in, ta- in having discussions with the, with, um, the kingdom people, uh, they, you know, had explained that, you know, of course these people are getting arrested because, you know, the government on the level of treasury, again, as explained again in the control structure, is way down the bottom, right above the people. So the the thought that anybody in the treasury department has any idea on what you're talking about is is a fantasy at best, uh, number one. Number two, these accounts were never located at the treasury department. Um, you know, and, and, and obviously it had to do with a lot of different agreements, nor at the Federal Reserve. So the accounts uh, always had existed within the trust, and and the funds traded and uh, were in the trust. And, of course, they had ownership right to do that as monarchs. And and then, yes, some of the funds were trickling down into what is called social insurance. And social insurance accounts still were not anywhere near government accounts. They were more on the slave master level, and social insurance was intended to fund programs uh, that would be helpful to you as a person, which actually was more like another control mechanism, but it was due to fund uh, public education, free public education, uh, uh, food stamp programs, uh, government assistance, uh, access to health care for the poor, and the government was supposed to receive monies uh, for these budgets um, that they agree to, for example, in the U.S. it's Congress, U.K. it's Parliament, and uh, in another country, various versions of the Duma, etc., and to disperse these funds to the people. And and, uh, these agreements were made well over a hundred some odd years ago, and very little, if any, went into these programs in comparison to the amounts generated. So most of the time they went into other activities, which uh, probably not you would have seen this, but it happened. And uh, our new funds um, or gold, or any variation there too, uh, in a manner of speaking, well, yes. But it's because after the end of the asset base belongs to the people. So the people of Earth. <laughs> Again, money works on supply and demand, the value of gold exists on supply and demand, and it's just a shiny object. It's and and, and happened to be uh, the standard of currency, um, basically because it's valuable everywhere. So, and it is only hold to high value because they have stopped the mining of gold. So, you know, again. Um, Everything works on supply and demand. Is there a treasury account in the United States Department of Treasury or the Federal Reserve that belongs to each person? No, there isn't. Um, I caution people. Uh, this is just of, of my own personal opinion. I would caution people on on trying to cash checks on a government account that doesn't exist. It's to be considered fraud. Uh, so I... I I understand probably OPPT's um, heart might be in the right place. Um, they may have a very small amount of knowledge on the inner workings of the system. And, you know, this is uh, something we've experienced in a number of locations very recently over the last 60 to 90 days with parties that may have worked for uh, a master level, or the family level, or the faction level, 
um, everyday person. Um, in the case of uh, these treasury accounts, and the reason why everybody's talking about it now, my opinion is have no access to the trust at all. And they have very little knowledge. And they think that all of the funds returned back to all of the people. Therefore, they're trying to use people while they're still slaves to get their funds back so that they can then take them out of the banks. Because they've basically depleted all liquidity of the banks worldwide. They're actually... Uh, they're sending out notifications for people that were owed money, may or may not have worked for uh, foundation. Others like it um, that have done work don't necessarily agree with the work, but it happened and it got paid and it got paid with funds that were in the system and they weren't allowed to take them out. Um, and therefore, they felt like the trust owes the money, which it technically does, because they did do work and and they did earn pay. So, uh, for that reason, they will be paid. But claim that um, you know now is time go find these people with the trust and take your money and doing all this stuff. You know, only thing it really did was give us you know the trust people an opportunity to to. Um, explain the truth to every individual uh, person. So, so yes, there's money available for projects. There's money available money available for industry. Uh, is there a building? As you can see, if on supply and demand, if you flood the system with that type of money, it will be worthless. So, or gold or any other commodity, any other item, it could be sugar. It doesn't really matter. It just, it doesn't work in the way that these people are portraying. And yes, uh, she encouraged people to defraud the United States government and therefore, you know, she's ended up exactly where she probably should be. <laughs> yep. Well, this is the problem with, um, People with a little bit of knowledge and thinking they know stuff. Uh, I've covered this on one of the shows. Um, you, you just cannot find on the internet the levels of uh, that's being described uh, in tonight's show. You just can't. You, there's, you know, there's bits here and there's bits there, but there's not the full package. Um, people are going out on a whim. Um, and seduced by the promise of wealth well this is what's brought us down this is how what, how or why humanity has got in the mess we're in because we're always see, seeking the next dollar or next pound or next euro and that's fine if it's if it's to do with your basic needs but largely, us in the Western world, it's more to do with competing with with somebody else, and and we have to stop it because it's feeding their way and their system. We have to create and implement a new way where everyone has the an abundance of the basic needs of life and. Um, and a decent lifestyle, not a wealthy one, you know, because once you break it down, there's very few of us that listen to this show have any sort of wealth, and eventually they'll take it off you anyway. This is the way it works. That's the way the system's always been. The idea that you're going to suddenly become a multi-millionaire or billionaire overnight is ridiculous. You know, it, it's the system has worked against us, but now it's about to change. Um, uh, but we, with that change, we have to be a lot more responsible, personally responsible for what, how we carry out our lives and what impact it has on others. We can't carry on with the uh, attitude of "I'm all right, Jack," and and stuff everyone else that type of competition has to end 
and we go forward in a better way. And yes, there, there might be a, a, a lot of projects coming up. It's up to you to create those projects. It's up to you to create the new way. And the idea of the People's Club is to get everyone caring and sharing for each other, looking after each other, which is something, again, in, uh, us in the Western world, not just this country, the whole Western world in general has stopped caring for each other. And uh, we're on the brink of something that's uh, never been achieved here, and it's extraordinary times to be in. Now we're going to go into some uh, politics Um, that will probably pretty much end tonight's show. There was a lot of chatter around two years. They have part of the uranium situation. Uh, The one most famous for that, though, um, was a lady um, by the name of Barbie. I'm going to call her Barbie. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Barbie <laughs> had cut the original deal, yeah. and it was in part because both Anne and Barbie are family members, and um, the gold had already been pledged as an asset in the past um, when the uh, U.S. dollar or Federal Reserve note was actually on the gold standard. And all nations were on the gold standard. So um, the gold, by agreement, um, was due to be mined um, and pledged to the U.S. government in support of the dollars, and then the dollars would go to the citizens, right? So, or whatever certificates or however you want to call them. Um, you got to be careful of the legal trickery. Yeah. So that was the dispersion of gold to citizens. Now, there are many other minerals which lie in and around gold, and, and uranium being one of them. Um, and yes, uh, the, uh, these two lovely ladies had cut a deal with a, uh, for some additional cash uh, from people of another nation. Um, everybody understands pretty well now from the two nations that that agreement really wasn't valid because the agreement... Uh, to manage said assets had already expired by that point. Um, the, the, the BLM is a uh, department of the United States, which is supposed to oversee and manage the, the land itself. Um, the assets underneath were pledged to the trust, and leverage time and time again until there was nothing left to leverage and therefore the asset base, um, you know, the, the U.S. went off the gold standard. Um, does that mean that it cannot be fixed? Of course it can be fixed, but the trust will not release the BLM asset base, minerals, mineral base, to anyone other than the U.S. government per agreement and that is after the U.S. government becomes a sovereign unto itself. It is no longer under the control of the, um, no longer under the control of any master trust, nor any other monarch, uh, other than obviously our commander in chief, uh, the president of the United States, which, which is currently Donald Trump, contrary to popular belief of Anne and others. Um, he is the president. So, um, <clears throat> hopefully, uh, those, those negotiations are taking place. Uh, we've been in negotiations off and on for about six months. Every time, you know, the negotiations get so far, the family members come forward and say, we've got this now, and some guy, you know, sits in some chair, special Illuminati chair somewhere, and sits there and says he's been... Now the Pindar, and then, you know, we're off in the running again, and then a couple of years go by, and the guy realizes sitting in that chair is no different than sitting in the lounge chair or, or a footstool or any other chair. <laughs> and um, then the next one jumps in and is promised the moon and stars, right? So yeah. 
you know, uh, there were negotiations going on last week. There will be no more negotiations going on this week and the week after with members of the trust. And hopefully we can come to a conclusion that, you know, um, the nation needs to be a nation unto itself. Um, the asset base is there. Uh, it is supposed to be under the management by the order of the Constitution of the um, of Congress. God help us. And um, the uh, and then the <laughs> and then of course um, dispersed um, by direct the Congress through the Treasury Department. So that is what the Constitution reads, and that is what is supposed to take place. Hopefully, um, you know, there are some educational tools going around. Um, you know, we have some resistance because the uh, members who no longer have access to assets, including Chinese elders and otherwise, are um, jumping up and down, claiming they're going to um, implement some new currencies in the world. Um with, you know, maybe they'll be backed by chewing gum or something else that's prevalent, uh, the tea of China, uh, something. And um, and then then these uh, people that hold all this dinar are going to be paid ridiculous sums of money, and it goes against every rule of macro macroeconomics existing. And so I don't I don't really see that happening. But you know, there is a lot of tea in China, so. <laughs> You never know. Yeah, the uh, legendary RV. Um, I think we're up to about a thousand and nineteen failed attempts at the moment, and counting one night, um, the stupidity will end and see some common sense, and we can all get on with uh, correcting the things that have gone wrong on this planet, and it won't be done by Chinese elders and bogus dragon groups, no matter what colour they they are. And uh, it's time that people, um, some of the um, top brass people in this country, started uh, acting and falling on behalf of, the, of this country and its people. They're the ones that count, not Rothschilds and SR. So, well, just, um, carry on. Sorry. I was just going to say that... Um, so we understand, uh, you know, even as citizens of the nations, you know, we all understand that these family members have caused great destruction all over the world, um, and they put the fear, fear of, I would say God, but not really, but the fear of some entity somewhere um, into all of these high-ranking members of government. On all 39 levels, and, and, and we understand that. Um, yeah. But remember, um, love uh, conquers fear. And I'm going to be very logical about it. Um, you know, love of country is also a love, right? Yeah. Love of people is also a love of your family. You love your family. And, you know, it has been proven that, you know, mothers of children have lifted cars and walked through fire, you know, to save to save their children. And, you know, that fear kind of goes away. Yeah. Um, and, and, and love will actually, love of their children conquers that fear. And, and it's the same that I believe can happen within governments, is that if everybody stands together, um, yeah. and there is nobody, because these, these guys are, you know, I don't, they're not going to get out of their fancy chair and, and, and do, and shoot anybody. Uh, they don't get their hands dirty like that. Um, no. So, um, you know, if there's nobody left to shoot and everybody's banded together, that unity alone um, will overcome that fear and, and as, you know, hopefully a, a mutual honor, loyalty, and respect for one another, um, no. you know, you really can turn this nation off. Absolutely. Really in their hands. Yep. So... The, pe the people are waiting for you. You know, we're, we're here to support you. We will provide the platform. Just step down and come and, uh, come and be a part of the real change where we all survive and prosper. 
So uh, there's a lot of to and fro uh, with the Trump cabinet team at the moment. Where is he at? And we are currently with uh, in regards to the American government. Well, um, you know, in my my understanding, um, <clears throat> the Kingdom of Mana teams and some of the trust teams uh, have some mutual friends. And for that reason, he's been afforded um, a bit of education um, and an opportunity to, to do what he's doing. Um, in other words, he's calling the fake media the fake media. He's, he's doing things that other presidents um, have not done, yeah. which I think is a really good thing. Um, by the same token, um, he is um, in the run the party that, that won the 1,089 contracts, but um, he's up there right now. Um, these uh, family members and people you call cabal members, which are basically family members to some lesser slave degree, um, they they are they're at his throat. Um, he's not conforming to their requests. Um, he is having his associates read laws that contain little clauses here and there, which obligate the United States to another hundred years of slavery or, or whatever. The clauses, and and he's not he's not buying it. Um, it's the reason why you see all these fights going on over health care laws and and the Paris uh, Climate Control Treaty and 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 now the sanctions, uh, Russian sanctions. Um, you know, there's always just that one or two liner in there, and everything they try to pass by this man, um, but. You know, you can say a lot of things positive and maybe a lot of negative things about Trump, but the one thing that he actually is, he's a second-generation very good businessman. And a good businessman reads every line in every contract ever passing by their desk before they sign it. So that might be them personally, it might be their legal teams, but he's doing it. And he's trying to protect the country the best that he can. And, you know, he, he opted for this at this time so you know we should all be thanking our lucky stars as citizens of the world that it is not Hillary Mm -hmm. (laughs) because well yeah I mean you know it doesn't matter what country you're a citizen of we should all be thanking our lucky stars we've been you know yeah you know I mean uh, I could I know Trump kind of splits of opinion. Um, there's no sort of grey area with Trump. You know, people either love him or they hate him. And, but um, whether he's the ideal person um, or not, um, the <laughs> if Anna had got in, then uh, Bedlam would be reigning on this soil. Because uh, some of the things that she had already implemented or thought she was implementing, but she thought she was going to win, it was almost guaranteed. Um, basically, she'd signed America away and its resources, uh, as I understand. And so, you know, uh, I'm not a, a great lover of Trump, um, but... If he's doing the right thing, he's doing the, uh, many right things. Um, some of the things that he, I don't like, I will say. Um, but uh, there's an awful lot of pressure being applied from all angles at the, at the moment with the fact different factions um, not too happy and they're all fighting each other. And, and it's not an easy uh, environment and we just have to wait for it all to settle down and see where all it all lies, and maybe we all might be a bit more surprised. Well, we're all learning, you know, and, yeah. and uh, a president is not God. Um, they are not the uh, person on every aspect of what to do and what not to do, and that's going to be a really tough job, right? 
you know, the families are going crazy, the factions are going crazy, there's no order to the order, you know, all the way up to the top, people are disappearing left and right, and, and, you know, just like every single one of us, you know, we all get up every day and try to do the best we can. Yeah. <laughs> That's just my own personal opinion. Yeah. And I would, I, uh, there is not enough money or power or anything else in this world to get money to sit in that chair. I promise you. That's a tough job. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, you know, it's like anything else. Um, this is a democracy and we're entitled to our own opinions on, and that's why we all are supposed to be able to uh, vote. And, um, you know, everybody has an opinion. Yeah. I don't know what's going on up there really in the closed doors, but, you know, I think everybody's trying the best that they can. And maybe, you know, as politically correct as some of our heads of state, but got to hand it to him. He's standing right, he's standing in there and we haven't lost, haven't lost yet, so that's good. (laughs) Um, NATO seems to be a big issue politically at the moment. Of course, uh, they, if I'm not uh, mistaken, that was also uh, roped in with the Paris Climate Treaty. Uh, if I'm not wrong. <sighs> and uh, <laughs> I suppose we also have to include the uh, Rothschilds family with NATO as well. Well, um, and this is a room, so. Um, We'll leave it at that. The rumor has it that um, the American families, and I'm not referring to military families or average everyday families, so we're we're really talking about Rothschild families here, have an intention of closing up shop in America after they've bankrupted it and, and moving to Norway in which they'll have their own private army which is no longer the U.S. military, it will actually be NATO. So they have control over the world's largest military force, known as NATO, um, that they should, and they're trying to bring NATO sovereignty unto itself. Uh, and, um, you know, apparently the new home for them will be Norway, and um, they will be running uh, NATO uh, doing what I'm not exactly sure because even the resources that NATO could possibly acquire for them have already been le- leveraged. So, you know, there comes a point where they're not asking themselves, and then what? Yeah. You know, they, they keep executing on these Swiss cheese plans with so many holes it would make Swiss cheese envious, and yeah. and they never get to the Like, uh, you know, starting your day and forgetting to brush your teeth and put on pants. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, everybody's got a plan, you know, when they walk out the door. I know I, you know, do like keys, you know, <laughs> car keys, uh, you know, checkbook, the card. You know, I go through this list every day when I leave the house because I have so many things going on in my mind. But, but you know, these people are forgetting we're getting some really big components to having a successful day. <laughs> so, but, but that is a, that is a rumor. That is the plan. NATO has been very busy on trying to um, collect money from nations uh, that do not have it to give. Number one, and number two, it's an insult uh, to every allied nation's military that, in the face of an enemy, that they with their current military force and their current um, uh, military equipment and defend the nations against a a foreign enemy. Um, I don't know why you would need duplicate military bases in places like, you know, this is a matter of my own personal opinion, but why would you need a duplicate base, say, in Germany? It has its own military. It's had its own military for many, many years, and why do they need a NATO base there, too? Yeah. Um, you know, same thing here with the United States. The United States is that military base is all over the world. Why do they need a third-party entity uh, to help them do their job? 
So it's very, it's a, it's like a, like double dipping. It's like, uh, you know, the only thing that you can actually come to the conclusion is under the SESQV agreements and other agreements like that and subsequent agreements, you know, they feel the need to have their own military force, which is actually a good sign for the United States of America because that must mean that the U.S. military is no longer carrying out their orders blindly anymore. That's all I can, as I could guess, as a matter of personal opinion. So now they're now they're trying to do the uh, control over NATO to collect resources that they already collected a long time ago and pledged to another third party entity, and they have nothing. So. Oh well. So uh, we've covered recently on the show about them raiding, and you mentioned it earlier about the, they've raided J.P. Morgan and tried to empty the assets accounts and uh, Bank of America issues. And there's also uh, reports coming in that they've now started raiding the accounts of uh, not only the Cabal banks, or known as the Cabal banks, uh, but also high-level family stroke Cabal members. And this, is, to me, is a sign mm-hmm. of the desperation. Is that correct? Well, sure. Um, you know, there's in order to keep their well-oiled um, corporate structure in place, you have to feed the. Mm-hmm. I'm going to. I was going to use a bad word. I'm going to. You have to feed the structure. Yeah. So, um, well, they don't call pork. You know, there's a term, a uh, government term or a term in lobbyist community about, uh, that, you know, you have to pay the pork, right? Well, you know, that's a nice way of saying something else. So anyway, um, you have to feed the structure. You have to keep the structure working. I mean, if the lights go out at CNN, you know, who's going to delve out fake news? Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> because there really is no more monkey, they're starting to siphon money out of their own um corporate structure at such a rapid rate the corporations can't produce enough funds to account for the loss. Um, they're claiming that all these corporations were funded by them, which is not true. Um, and they're claiming they own all these corporations and, you know, they're draining even Seven Sisters, as I understand it. Uh, seven Sisters being the seven largest oil companies to which all other oil companies are subsidiaries of. So uh, I've, I've heard rumors about that. I've heard rumors about them uh, draining funds from, um, you know, Turner Industries on CNN. I've heard them draining funds, you know, to a point where these people couldn't even make payroll at the time. Uh, so, yeah, they've drained all the governments pretty well, um, the ones that will adhere to their um, uh, their plea, I guess, or have been able to attack them uh, with cyber attacks. Uh, they have been unsuccessful at certain places, therefore they put sanctions on these places so that then they have the right to to um, <clears throat> take back all their quote-unquote U.S. dollars, which they claim to own. Um, they claim it is not U.S. currency, it is theirs. Uh, so, you know, there, it's a very odd world up there. Um, you know, when we say, you know, we've learned a lot from our enemy is our greatest teacher, yeah. Um you know, the, when you start getting past D, P, C level and even, you know, master level, slave master level um, to an extent or family master, whatever you want to call it, you know, you get past that point and you start getting down into the family level. And um, unless I'm trying to really define the definition of insanity, then I really, we really haven't learned anything from these people. Yeah. <laughs> So that most of the teaching came from above that because otherwise you're getting really into the definition of insanity right now. Like, a, you know, oh, well, we need to release seven quad and, you know, into the system, seven quad and what currency? Well, USD. I'm like, okay, well, now where, how are we going to support that? And, you know, it's going to be worth less than your dinar you're trying to exchange. And, you know, they don't understand what I'm talking about, so just forget it. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah. I kind of explain to our members how um, flooding the system with any uh, sort of funds. I know there was uh, two figures mentioned of uh, somewhere in the region of 170 trillion, and then another one in 80 trillion. And it's just 
it beggars belief to go into one one country and um, it's uh, like you say it's um, they are uh, they are unseen because uh, <laughs> yeah it, it's just uh, you, you can't you, you run out of <laughs> words to describe no. the, the levels of stupidity. Um, that they are prepared to go to now to keep hold of a system that's already failed and it has failed. Well, they spent all this money, yeah. you know. Uh, it's not like, you know, it came out of the system and at the time, you know, there were plenty of uh, assets and contracts and global trade and, and whatnot going on. And, and it's simply been spent, you know. Um <sighs> You know, with no access to the accounts and and doing all the the black magic and money magic and whatever they're doing behind the scenes, it doesn't work anymore. Nope. You know, where it do, it just doesn't work, and they're going to continue doing this, you know, probably till the end of days. So, you know, in our in our opinion, at least in my personal opinion, um, it would be more fruitful and important to work with the government level on down and in fixing the planet you know we have 8 billion people he's ready to go to work ready to do whatever it is their passion is and whatever it is they love to do and 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 I think that's all we really need I don't really think we need any other levels or anybody else and I think if everybody can just get along and you know respect our differences and and, and embrace our likeness um, we, we can all get along just fine and and start fixing this this planet. Absolutely, here, yeah, here. Yeah. Well, it's going to be uh, the final question uh, for tonight's show, uh, and because I know many people who want this question asked, um, we always ask the tricky questions on this show. Um, what is the status of uh, or for the funding for the People's Club? Well, um, again, um, we need a bank in the United States uh, that can take the funds, and um, we also need a enough protection in place to where the members can keep the funds and yeah. then use the funds. Right. So yeah. we have a severe problem. We've been working on, um, you know, in regards to Fed wire systems and, and, and other things that are. You know, money is going missing all over the place. So, yeah. like, would like to say it'll be, you know, two weeks. <laughs> 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 but I, but, but I also know our teams are are very good at what they do. I know they're working very, very hard. Um, and and I do anticipate it uh, being very soon. I, we wish it was sooner. We were hoping it was going to be, you know, in our first round of negotiations, which were taking place, you know, six, eight months ago. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> whereby, you know, things seemed to be going very well, and then the families jumped back in, and, you know, their Paris Treaty didn't go the way they thought, or their, you know, leveraging of other countries' assets didn't go the way they thought, and then they came back and said, oh, we're going to pay you all, and, you know, this time, and then they talk to the Treasury Department and this department and all the people they have in everywhere and you know and then then we're getting help from from United States banks so yeah you know, um, we are I promise you <laughs> yeah. um, we are all doing the best that we possibly can and yes, I know the kingdom of mana people are plowing through everything they can legally politically banking cyber um, and they're doing a great job. So I yes. applaud them and all the members of the team. Yes. Final word? Well, you know, nothing to fear but fear itself. Fear is a created emotion. Uh, it did not exist in our world <laughs> um, until the control structures started to take place. Um, remember, um, love will always conquer fear. And... You know, be kind to one another. Um, you know, it doesn't take money to help another soul. You know, it, it, it takes time, sometimes a little extra effort, going that little extra mile. We need to take care of each other. 
Yep. Um, money is not going to solve all problems. You know, there's still a mentality, you know, of people wanting to point fingers at the government or point fingers at the at these other other groups and and families and and whatnot. You know, they're just all people. They're all beings. <laughs> Everybody came from the same place, yep. and they're not to be worshipped as gods. Um, we're not to worship each other as gods, and you know, uh, we need, but but we are all equal, hmm. and we're and a lot of us are all struggling with the same thing. You know, everybody's been lied to, everybody's tired, but just remember, you know, helping one another is the, is a start. Hmm. Coming up with businesses that. That, that will help other people, that will provide people with good, clean food, um, you know, and all the things that we all desire. Um, yeah. Just just remember, do it from your heart. Do it from what is what you're passionate about because then you're going to do it with full success and it's not even going to feel like work to you. Yeah. So just, just really take care of each other. Stay in faith. Um, you know, there may be a point in time where the kingdom people may call upon you to help the country or help your neighbor and and just pray. And you don't have to be strong and you don't have to be able to shoot a gun uh, to, to make that happen. No. You know, everybody is important yeah. on, to, to make their contribution. Absolutely. Well, we thank you for uh, giving us your time. I'm reading some of the comments. Uh, everyone really enjoyed it. And um, hopefully we, now the members and the people who listen to this show and the other people who are listening for the first time see where we've been, where we are and where we intend to go. It's important that we all come together. It's important that we... Um, exercise patience because you've listened tonight to a whole heap of structures that have been uh, in essence a 16 and a half thousand year structure that in essence has been collapsed to the point of no return within a decade it's unprecedented there are so many different levels to it and there's so many different things that need to be fixed and worked upon. Somewhere in the region, 500 different elements to it. And all have to be uh, in a row and lined up and nailed down. And all the legal work has to be done. And all the negotiations has to be done. And in the meantime, people are facing threats to themselves and the groups. So I hope... Um, our listeners now have the full picture of what is taking place here because th this is uh, probably the best time ever on this planet to be alive on this planet. It might not feel like to certain people as people are struggling in different ways. But boy, are we in for a fun ride going forward. We are close. We will prevail. And we will go forward on this planet in a better way than we've had to absorb over the many, many thousands of years of their control. But we must create a system that's better than theirs, not replicate it. This is where the cabal, as we call it, failed. They failed to step into the void that was left by the higher control system which has all collapsed they couldn't do it they failed we have to step into the void of their failure and go forward towards a brighter, brighter future if you lead life in love and care you will prevail if you lead life in fear and anger you will fail feel free for you to be the person you wish to be not the person who conforms to what others want them to be. 
You are a multidimensional being operating simultaneously on many levels. You are not here to conform. You are not here to be stifled. You are not here to be enslaved. And you are not here to be abused or to compete with your friends, family or neighbours. You are here to be the best you can be and do so as the crown of creation. Now go out with the confidence of who and what you are 